Hi, I'm Rob, and this is my Tinker Space. I've been looking at the different ways in which I can shoot video in here, and I've realised that I need to be able to take an overhead shot. So I built this camera rig. Let me show you how. Here we are. This is my space and my well-travelled tripod. I can't put it on the mat, that's just ridiculous. To get a decent angle I need to stretch the legs, but that just makes it too dangerous as the feet are very close to the edge. I do have a smaller tripod, that's got my smartphone holder in it, but that's in the way if I put it between me and the project work. Plus it's not that stable. I can put the camera over to one side, but that means my hands come in at an odd angle and I don't want to show you that. So here's what I'm using. Ten of these 90 degree bends. Four of these T-shed connectors and this 20mm PVC conduit. Mine came in 2 meter lengths and you need 6 meters in total. Then I need this quarter inch ball head camera mount, some M4 nuts and bolts, more conduit in black this time and some 20mm PVC pipe clips. Working out on paper first, I figure I need an 850mm length a 720mm length, two at 590 and 550, and four at 445mm. Off camera I also cut six joining pieces at 40mm in length. The assembly works from the smallest length up to the longest, like this. I start off by laying out the four short lengths with a T-connector at the top of each. Using two of the 40mm joining pieces, I combine them to make a left and a right side. A corner gets added to the bottom of each leg. Then a connector and a corner on each of the outside edges. The next two lengths are added to run along the outside of the frame. Then we put a corner on the top of those two. The last two corners and connectors cap off the inside of the frame. Finally we join up the two sides with the remaining four lengths. This was a dry fit to make sure it all worked according to plan. I went back and added superglue to all the joints, except for the ones marked in blue in this shot. These joints need to turn. So to stand the frame up, you lift the inner part of the frame and push back on the centre bar. This will make a triangular frame with two bars running across the top for added strength. Now for the camera arm. I marked off 40mm from the edge of the black conduit. Then poured some recently boiled water into a glass and sat the conduit in that for about a minute. The heat had softened the plastic in the conduit so I was able to make it into a flat surface. I then made marks on the flat surface to line up with the holes in the camera mount. I drilled two 4mm holes and used some bolts to fasten the camera mount to the arm. Next, to attach the arm to the frame, I needed some 90 degree clips. I couldn't find them anywhere, so I made some. To make sure I could get a good grab on the flat surfaces, I first passed them over some 80 grit sandpaper. Then I just use an alcohol wipe to clean the surfaces of any residue. A few drops of superglue hold the two pieces together and make the clips that I wanted. Thank you. 
and here's how the camera arm fits to the frame. I attach my smartphone cradle to the camera mount. Next, the clip goes onto the top horizontal beam. I then feed the arm into the side of the clip, and there we have it. Just need to add a smartphone, and we're ready to film. The clip lets me slide the arm left and right, and up and down. The ball joint on the camera mount lets me point the camera in any direction, and I can even twist the camera arm around inside the clip, but I'm not sure if I'll use that feature. So there we are. I'm really pleased with this frame. Got plenty of space underneath, open at the front, and my arms don't catch on the legs as I'm moving around. It's lightweight too, so I can fold it flat and hang it on the wall when I'm not using it. I'm already thinking about how I can tinker with the design and what else I can add to it. For example, if you're not that fussed about folding it flat, you can extend the length of these legs, raise up this beam, and your camera will sit a lot higher above the table. I'll put links in the description below to the parts that I've used for this project and I'll also put a link to the project page on the website so you can pick up some extra build tips. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.